Now that we have our Linux operating system installed, we're going to go ahead and move forward into understanding how the boot process works. Starting off, we'll take a look at the available bootloaders, primarily what a bootloader does for us and some of the features that each particular bootloader will offer us. And once we've got a pretty good idea of what bootloaders are available, we'll take a look more specifically at our two major bootloaders, including Lilo and Grub. Now after we look at some of the more specific configuration options and settings that go into both Lilo and Grub, we'll move into the FS tab file and talk about what benefits and functionality the FS tab file offers us. Continuing forward, we'll take a look at the user logon profiles and how those will be loaded in what order and what functionality that they offer. And finally, we'll look at some troubleshooting that can benefit us when trying to figure out problems associated with the boot process. So let's go ahead and take a look at what a bootloader is. And the basic concept is that the bootloader is going to be responsible for getting us to a point where the Linux kernel or other kernel can start the operating system. So we want to be able to get to a point where we can hand off control over to a particular operating system and allow it to start loading key features and ultimately give us access to the system. Now there's a couple of different options as far as where it can be located. Specifically, it can either be in the master boot record or the MBR or in the first sector of the Linux partition. Now we're going to prefer to put it in the MBR where possible. And there might be some other compatibility options that would force us to put it in the first sector of the Linux partition. Specifically, if you're trying to dual boot with a Windows operating system and you're having some problems. And that might be an option that's available to you. Now there are actually two bootloaders that we use most commonly. Lilo, or Linux Loader, and Grand Unified Bootloader, or Grub. Now in addition to simply loading the individual operating systems, we can also pass specific boot options through these individual bootloaders. I've got some examples here, such as rescue version or fail-safe booting. Now there are actually many different options available to you. These are just a few examples. And we'll talk about a few of the other options available as we move forward. Now your bootloaders are actually going to be installed by Linux or installed from Linux, although they can be used to manage other operating systems such as DOS, Windows, and just about anything you can think of, Novell, Mac, all of those can be managed from the bootloader. And the main reason that it has that flexibility is that the bootloader doesn't actually have to understand the operating system, it just has to know where the boot files for that operating system are located. So if Microsoft Windows has a certain location for its individual components, then the only thing that has to be known by the bootloader is the actual location of those files. Now, as I mentioned before, the bootloader is either going to be installed during the Linux installation or installed afterwards using the Linux operating system. Now, you can do any kind of modifications or changes after the installation has taken place. As a matter of fact, we'll be covering some of those different files that you can manipulate as we move forward.